I'll tell you, I've got a little problem this morning. If any of you ever run a chainsaw, <laughs> I hear my chainsaw, it's still roaring in my head from this way. And I can't hardly tell where I'm a hollering or where I'm a whispering up here. But I hope you can all hear me. And, and it's good to be here with you folks this morning. It's a blessing. Uh, I've been a Gideon since 1991. And, and I look forward, really, to getting to go out to the many churches in our county and, and just share what God does through the Gideon ministry. It's a blessing. And... And I'm thinking, well, you know, I feel right home here with you folks this morning. It's always good when you're with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And I just live right across the hill here. You, you folks probably all know me. I, I grow apples, and I've uh, grown apples, uh, well, pretty much all my life, let's say. And it's, it's always a blessing to, to, to come and be with God's people. So, good morning. You know, I pray for your church here. We, we pray for your churches in the Gideon ministry. And this is such a, a great ministry that we're in. I see all these flags you got over here on the wall. And I'm thankful for you, you folks are, are doing what God has called you to do, I believe, this morning. And you're supporting missionaries in these, in these foreign countries, and that's what we're to do. We're to take God's word uh, to the world. That, that's what the commission that the Lord Jesus gave us. And, you know, I'm thankful that God has allowed me to be an apple grower, but more important than that, when I was a young boy, the Lord Jesus saved my soul at a revival meeting. And not long after that, the Gideons placed this little testament right here in my hands at school. And I know that God used the Gideons to put this testament in my hands at a time that I really needed it to begin my walk in faith. We have many testaments that we give out as, as Gideons, and that's what we do. We, we give God's word out. I can get them out of my pocket. <laughs> this right here, this is a personal worker's testament. We call this a PWT. And this is a testament. Now, when we witness to somebody, this is a testament that we'll give to these people. And you know, there's a place back here in the back of these testaments that spells out God's plan of salvation. And if a person gives their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, they can, they can write their name in the back of this little testament, and they can put down the date that they received uh, the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And that's who Gideons are. We're born-again believers. We're either businessmen or uh, active men. A few years ago, they let us farmers start becoming Gideons because, that, that, you know, farming is a work. You're, you're really working with the Lord in pro producing the physical food that people need to eat in this world. But we, you know, we, we can be thankful for God that we serve. He meets not only our physical needs, but more importantly, he meets our spiritual needs through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can be thankful for that this morning. And at 7 o'clock every Saturday morning, we have our Gideon prayer meeting. Jerry Holcomb up at Holcomb Brothers Funeral Home, he's, he's a Gideon. And, and he lets us use the funeral home to have our prayer meeting. We come together on Saturday mornings and, and we share some scripture we go to the Lord in prayer. And I can personally tell you that I've seen many of the prayers that we've prayed up there on Saturday mornings that God has answered. How many of you folks at some point in your life have received a Gideon Testament? Have any of you received that? That's good. Glad to see that number that has received a Gideon Testament this morning. And like I mentioned, uh, we make every effort to put a Gideon Testament in as many hands as possible. This little red Testament here, this is the Testament we give out in the schools to the fifth graders. Now, when I went to school, and probably when a lot of you folks went to school, a Gideon could come in to your classroom and personally hand you a Testament. Well, it's not that way anymore. The only way that we can go into the schools now, we have to place the Testaments on a table. And when the students are dismissed or going to lunch, they can pick up a testament. So that's the way it is in our world today. 
But let me share something else with you. Our camp, well, the First Baptist Church up at Burnsville on the Square, on Halloween, they have a hot dog supper. And now a lot of kids, they come out to this hot dog supper, and I mean a lot of kids. So the first year we done this, we, get, we gave out nearly a 1,000 testaments up there. So last Halloween, you know how many testaments we gave out? Nearly 1,500 testaments. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't just kids receiving those testaments. A lot of adults was receiving a testament too. And we thank the Lord for that. And we know that that's something we need to pray about, our young people. They need the Bible. They need God's Word. And that's, that's the reason that we make every effort to put as many, the God's Word into the hands of as many young people as we possibly can. And of course, we are in. We give out testaments in other places. We got the, a little blue testament. We give out to the uh, policemen and the firemen, and we have white testaments that goes to doctors, and lawyers. We got a green testament. We give out on at Maywin, uh, the college uh, campus, and you know, God uses His word in many different ways. We can be thankful that God's given us his word to give out to other people, can't we? It, and, and also, this is the Gideon Bible that many of you probably know about. If you've ever been in a hotel or motel, you've probably found a Gideon Bible in that room. Y'all know how the Gideons got started? Way back in 1899. Two men worked for this company, and they was having their convention in a small town up in Minnesota. And both these men were Christians. It seems that both of them had went off and left their Bibles at home. And they wanted to hold their devotions. So they went out into a store and they bought a Bible and they brought it into that hotel and they had their devotions right there in the lobby of that hotel. Well, they decided when the convention was over that, well, let's just leave this Bible here in this lobby and when we come back next year, it'll be very far. So that's what they did. You know what happened? Some churches found out that that Bible had been left in the lobby of that hotel. And they said, hey, let's, let's start receiving some offerings. And when we get enough money, we're going to put a Bible in every room of that hotel. And that's how the Gideons got started, right there, folks. And it's been a going on for many, year, many years, and, and billions of scriptures have gone out. But you know, it seems like the more scriptures that goes out, they such a great hunger for God's word in our world today. And that's what we're striving to do, is to meet that word. Because I think God wants every single person to have a Bible. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's our only goal as Gideons, too. We want to see people come to know and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. That's our only goal as Gideons. And about three years ago, I had the opportunity to participate in a Gideon Blitz. You ever heard of a Gideon Blitz? Well, this took place over at Iceville. And what, we do, what the Gideons do, they just saturate an area with God's Word. And they divided us up, I think it was 160 Gideons that participated in this blitz, besides the auxiliary, and that's the Gideon's wives, they participated in it also. And they divided us up in teams of four. And the team that I was with went to the Black Mountains, one and over Mont Treat area. That's the area that we worked. And they had other teams that went as far as uh, Waynesville and Haywood County, and they had some other teams that come out to Weaverville and went as far north as uh, Mars Hill. They, they distributed co uh, the Bible or college testaments in the college out in Mars Hill. So the team I went with out to Black Mountain, uh, we visited all the fire departments and the, and the police departments. And we went to some libraries and uh, lawyers' offices, I think, and, and we, we was putting out these testaments. And we had some inns and some motels there in that area. Now, what we was doing, we was going in all the rooms and picking up the Bibles that was in those rooms and replacing them with a new Bible. And that's what we was, we was doing all over Asheville as well. And 
when we picked up all those old Bibles, you got any idea what we done those, uh, with those old Bibles that we was picking up? We didn't throw them out. We took the cover off, the hard cover on these Bibles. We took the cover off of them and we replaced this hard cover with a soft cover so that the old Bibles could be placed in prisons and jails all over North Carolina. So, that's a good thing, I think, right there. We recycle those Bibles. You know, we have went through the new Ray End up here, checking all the rooms for Bibles in there, and we have found a room that would have a Bible missing. But you know what that tells us? Somebody, God is speaking to somebody's heart through his word right there. And we, we start praying for whoever that person might be. We don't know who it is, but God knows. And we go to praying for that person. Now, Gideons, we're active in over 200 countries in our world today. There's only about 18 countries that the Gideons are not in. And those are Muslim countries that are anti-Christian. But you know, God's really opening up the doors in our world today. And I think that's because that we're living in the last days. And God wants us to reach as many people as he possibly can in this day and age that we're living in. But in going to these foreign countries, you know, there's like, uh, barriers that have to be broken down. And language is one of those barriers. Gideon's published their testaments and their Bibles in over 101 different languages. Now, what good is a Bible if you can't read it? So we... We, we press, print the Bibles in a language that people can understand. And when the Gideons go into a foreign country now, it's not American Gideons over there handing out the scriptures. We go in and we form a camp in that country. And it's actually the native people of that country that are taking God's word to their native people right there in their own country. So that eliminates a lot of the barriers right there. And in the Philippines, every one of those little islands over there, they've got a little different dialect or language. And that's where the uh, Gideons are working right now to try to get the, the scriptures printed in these dialects. And it's the same way in the country of India, too. Just about every little province over there, they speak a little different language. But let's pray for these people. I mean, that's what we need to do. We, we can put God's word out there, but we've got to put some prayers behind it also, I think. So let me ask you folks a question this morning. How many Bibles do you think are found in the average Christian America, uh, home in America today? Anybody got any ideas, any thoughts on this? The average Christian home in America today has nine Bibles in it. But the sad part is, only about 15% of these Bibles are being read on a daily basis. And we take our Bibles for granted in this country because we have so many of them. But you know, in these foreign countries, there's a great hunger for God's Word. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do is, is to meet people's needs through the Bible. God's Word is very clear. So what do you think of when you see a Bible? What do you think of when you see a Bible? Do you believe that this is God's inspired word right here? That he has he inspired godly men to write it? And it's been passed down from generation to generation right on down to us today. Do you believe that book should be read every single day? I think you'll find it'll make a difference in your life if you read God's word every single day. But a lot of people, we get content to just hear the Bible read only in church. But this Bible is our spiritual food, ain't it? Not many of us miss meeting, eating the three meals a day, so we shouldn't miss feeding our soul with, from God's Word. That's our spiritual food. So God's Word, I think, is very clear to us as Christians today. We read and study God's word to know more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we give it away. 
so that others might come to know and accept Christ as their Savior. Now, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 is where Jesus gave us the Great Commission. And it's, it's, he gives us this word, go. And it's, go ye into all the world. Go. That's, that requires a little effort, a little action on our part, don't it? But that's what we're to do. God wants his word out there so people can hear the good news of the, of the gospel. <clears throat> but you know, we also have the gift of being able to hide God's word in our own hearts and in our own lives. And the one thing I want to share, uh, you know, when you, God calls a loved one home, you can place a Gideon Bible in memory of that person. And little Yancey County up here, you know, we're the leading county in the whole state of North Carolina in the placement of Gideon Memorial Bibles. So something to think about it. Let me share a verse of scripture right quick if I can find it. Bear with me. Okay, this is Luke, Luke chapter 21, verse 33. The Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. So, you know, flowers are all right at a funeral, but when you place one of these Gideon Bibles, you're putting something there that's going to be a memorial for that person for eternity, forever. Because God's word, the Bible tells us God's word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. And that, that means that we have original copy of Bibles in heaven. That means it's true. It's all going to come to pass. It's all going to be fulfilled. So this book is the only book we have that tells us where we come from. The only book we have that tells us where we're going to go. And you know, it tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the most important part right there. People that accept the Lord Jesus, are going to, when they die, they're going to go to be with the Lord in heaven. But people that refuse and reject the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to find themselves separated from God forever and ever in a place of awful torment. Now, folks, that ain't what God wants. He wants people to accept Christ because his grace is sufficient. He can meet the needs. And the Bible tells us that where more grace is needed, more grace will be provided. God's grace is inexhaustible. And we need God's grace every single day. I don't know about you folks, but I know I need God's grace every single day. And he always meets that need. Now, some people like to share their testimony with the Gideons. Uh, Mr. Pat Thomas lived in Cincinnati, Ohio. Come home one day, he noticed something up on the roof of his house. Well, that got his curiosity up. He just had to go get his ladder. He climbed up there, and you know, he found a little testament on the roof of his house. He brought it down. He opened it up. His, uh, he was retired now. He's getting elderly, but his eyesight was so bad, he just couldn't read the print. It was so small. And he turned over to the back here where God's plan of salvation is spelled out. And you know, God got to speaking to this man's heart. And he started attending a church in his community. And one evening when the altar call was made, he went down and he knelt, knelt in the altar and he asked the Lord Jesus to come into his heart and his life. And he got saved that night. But you know, just a little while after that, he got sick. And he went to the doctor. And the doctor told him he had a terminal illness. And he lived only a few more weeks after that. Now, nobody knows how that little testament got on his roof. But because of that little testament, it got him in church and it got him right with the Lord. And he was prepared for the day that God called him out of this world. 
over in the French guy in him, a man named Jim Felipe. He was a self-employed electrician doing some electrical work in a motel room. And he'd work most of the day. And he sat down there on the edge of the bed and taking a little break and happened to look over on the nightstand and saw a Gideon Bible there. And something told him to pick up that Bible and to read from it. And that's exactly what he did. And he found out something I guess we all find out a lot of times. Seems like the more you read from the Bible, the more you want to read from the Bible. And but he saw he was going to have to get back to his work, so he, he just laid the Bible down there on the bed, the open Bible. And he went back to his work there. He finished up. It's quitting time, ready to go home. He's packing up all his tools. And there laid that Gideon Bible right where he'd been reading. So he closed it up, and he took it home with him. And he read that Bible home. And like Mr. Thomas Lord started dealing with his heart. He started attending a church there in his community. And he went forward one night when the altar call was given. And he gave his heart, his life to Jesus. But you know, God wasn't done with this man. God called him into the Gideon ministry. And you know, he had the opportunity of going back to that same hotel room and putting the Bible there for the next person that would come along. Down in Columbia, South America, a little girl, she got her Red Testament at school. She brought it home and showed it to her daddy. Well, her daddy didn't think she was hardly old enough to try to be reading and understanding scriptures, so he just took stuck that Testament down his shirt pocket and he went off to work. Now, he was a miner. And he was kind of a foreman over about 10 or 12 other miners. And they all went down in the bottom of that mine and started their work. And they hadn't been down there long until there was a, an explosion. And that mine caved in. It took about three days for them to get to reach those men. And, of course, they was all dead then. They used up all the oxygen and the iron. They passed away. But when they found that little testament in that girl's daddy's shirt pocket, you know, every one of those miners had signed their name in the back of that little testament that they had accepted Christ because of that little testament that that man had, had with you. You know, it's just amazing how God can take these little testaments and, you know, he can put them into the hands of the people that need them the most. Just amazing, ain't it? How God can use his word. I'm going to share a few verses of Scripture with you this morning that I think helps us to understand how important God's Word really is. Jesus tells us in John chapter 4, verse 35, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already at harvest. Now, if this was true in Jesus' day, how much more true is it in this our day? You know, if you walk down any street or road in our country today, in any town or city, do you realize that two out of every three that people that you pass on the street are lost people, lost without Christ? And the Bible also tells us that today is the day of salvation. Every 10 seconds, somewhere in this world, 20 people will die and go out into eternity. So... Salvation is not something to be put off. Every second, two people will die somewhere in this world. And like I mentioned before, those that have accepted Christ will go to be with him, but those that have refused him are going to go into a place of awful torment. And that's not what God wants. Listen to what he tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I think this expresses God's desire for the salvation of all, every person that will trust in Christ. John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus says, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. He that heareth my word. So this book's pretty important, ain't it? This is, this is God's word. This is, this is what we hear and what we believe. You know, God promises good success. Listen to what he told Joshua in chapter 1, verse 8. He says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I think that applies to us today. Y'all be successful? Right here's the key. And another verse that Gideon's like to use is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. The Bible tells us, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. So God's word is so important in our world today. You know, we have an adversary in our world today, too, don't we? The devil. Everything that we're tempted to do for the Lord Jesus Christ to in furthering God's work in this world, we've got our adversary always trying to mess things up. But you know, the Bible tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We be thankful for that. You know, Jesus won the victory for us, did he? He won the victory for us. But uh, I do want you to pray. Uh, we're going to have, again, we're going to have another scripture blitz coming up the third week in March in Charlotte. So I'd like for you folks to, to be much in prayer for that. Over at Isha, we, we put out over 40,000 Bibles and Testaments in the, in the around in the neighboring area of our around high school. You know, we don't know how God's used his word, but He know, we know that he's using it. And we, a lot of people, we uh, out on the street, we give them a, a personal worker's testament here. One guy I met was a homeless guy. And I offered him a testament. He shook his head no. But I told him if he'd take that book, it might make a big difference in his life. And he took that book with him. He took that book, and I don't know his name. You know, that's all we can do as Gideons is, is give this book away to somebody. And the Holy Spirit, I think, will take it from there. That's all we can do. So we pray. You know, the, the Gideon's ministry is a very spiritual ministry. And we pray. Ain't you glad that God has given us prayer? Boy, boy, we can call on God. We don't have to go through nobody else. God knows. He hears our prayers. He knows what we're. He knows our situation before we even tell him about it. He knows, and we just pray that through the Holy Spirit that people come to know and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior while they have time and opportunity in this world today. Y'all got any questions you'd like to ask me? Y'all quiet. <laughs> I hope I share a little bit with you about what God does in this ministry. And I'm not going to send you folks home this morning without a verse of Scripture to take with you. And I share this verse of Scripture wherever I go to speak for the Gideons and churches. And, and this is a very, I think, familiar uh, verse of Scripture. And it's easy to remember, too. It's from, it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And you, that's probably familiar scripture with you. That's what we call the love chapter. And it's verse 13. Now, this verse reminds us of what we have right now in this day and age because of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And that verse says, And now abideth what? Faith, hope, charity. And the greatest of these is what? Charity. Now, y'all know what charity is, don't you? That's love. That is love. And, you know, the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And why do you think that is? I think it's because that a relationship with the only true and living God can only happen as we as individuals come and place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one who provides the forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. And we're all sinners, folks. And because of our sin, there ain't nothing we could do that would make ourselves acceptable to God, who is holy. So we have to come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And when a person accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior, that's when that person begins his or her walk in faith by trusting the Lord each day to provide the help that they need in pleasing God. Now, where does faith come from? The Bible tells us faith comes from hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Amen. God gives us the faith to believe from his word. And you know, faith in Christ is really what gives us hope, ain't it? And I think this is the hope that is looking forward to something good that's about to take place or about to happen. You know, as Christians, we have for sure hope when we die and leave this world our soul is going to go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, we have the certain hope that when Jesus returns to this earth, that our souls will be joined to our resurrected body. And this is a blessed hope, folks, because one day Jesus is going to return to this earth. He's coming back. And you know, it's also a purifying hope because but we want to be ready meet him when he comes. So this is where our hope should be today, folks. This whole world ain't our home. We've got a better place to go to because of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. But faith and hope are our experience that you know it's only because of God's eternal love. And this is the kind of love, folks, that Cause an almighty God to send his one and only begotten son into this world to die for the sins of the world on the cross and to be resurrected the third day. And it's also love that God sheds abroad in our hearts. You know, before you can even give out one of these little testaments to another person, I think you've got to have some love and concern in your own heart for that person. And you remember the great commandments? that Jesus told the man in the Bible. The first is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And what else? Love your neighbor as yourself. And folks, I, we can't do that, can we? I think God has to be in your heart, and then you can do that. So faith, hope, and charity or love are our experience today because of the Lord Jesus Christ. But love is the greatest. You know, one day, our faith is going to be beside. And the things that we're hoping for, they're going to become a reality. But you know, love don't change. If anything, love just keeps growing stronger and stronger. And what does the Bible tell us? God is love. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you know, to have the privilege of enjoying the pure love of God <clears throat> forever and ever and ever. Folks, <clears throat> I don't think our minds can even begin to comprehend and understand how wonderful that is going to be. But just knowing this truth ought to cause us to get on our knees every single day and thank the Lord for providing such a wonderful redemption through his son, Jesus Christ. 
That's about all I have this morning. If you got any questions you'd like to ask me about the Gideons, I'll try my best to answer them. <laughs> One thing, maybe you're here today, and you know, God calls people into this Gideon ministry. And our camp's pretty low. I mean, we lost Jack Alley, and me and another guy, Jim Edwards. We're, we're the only two speakers in our county. We got over 100 churches here in Yancey County that we, that we like to try to get a service in. So we're needing some help. And if you're here and you feel <clears throat> the Lord speaking to your heart, he could be calling you into this Gideon ministry. So I would invite you to speak to me after the service and, and we can put you on the road to becoming a Gideon in this ministry. And, and I can tell you from my own experience, I've been a Gideon since 1991 and I know it has been a great blessing in my life. I can personally tell you that. But it's good for me to be here with you folks this morning and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention, and I'll tell you one, one more thing. I become a Gideon in 1991. These little these Bibles cost $5 back then. These little testaments, they cost a dollar and a quarter. And would you believe if I told you that that's the same price that they are today? Not many things have not gone up, have we? But they, God, I think God's keeping the price of these little testaments and Bibles pretty cheap. And a lot of them, that pays for not only the publishing of this Bible, that pays for transporting it to wherever that scripture is going. And as Gideons now, I'm here to ask you to support us with financially and also to support us with your prayers. And it's just, a, like I told you before, it's amazing what God can do with his holy word. It's just amazing and a blessing. And we pray for you folks. We'll be praying for your ministry in these other countries. You know, I have no idea where you, the Bibles are going to be going that your church is going to supply. But you know, God knows. He knows. So I'm asking you, those Bibles are going to go out now. I'm asking you to pray. Put some prayer behind those Bibles, and you'll see some results. But that's all I have this morning. Jeff, you want to dismiss us or... Anybody, anybody got anything they'd like to mention? <laughs>